Hey everyone, Matt Lake here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up Live Link between Motion Builder and Unreal. So in today's video, it will be using Motion Builder 2022 and I'm going to be using Unreal 5. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install Live Link into both Unreal and Motion Builder. Then we're going to connect the two uh, softwares together and then we're going to get the data streaming through onto a character. So first things first, like I say, installing Live Link into Unreal. You can do that by going into the top right here and hitting the settings icon. You can hit the plugins option and you'll get a big list of plugins that are available in Unreal 5. Um, you can just type live link in the top right here and it'll show you the live link version 2.0 plugin that is available. I already have it enabled. Yours might be enabled by default. It may not, um, but make sure that checkbox is hit. You'll get a warning to restart if you need to. Um, but one way to check if it's enabled is to go back to the, the scene browser, hit window at the top, and you'll get an option here called virtual production and live link. So if you can see that window, it's available and it's operational. So the next thing we're going to do is install it into motion builder. So I'm going to put a link in the description to a GitHub repository. Um, this is github.com forward slash UE4 plugins forward slash Mobu live link. Um, Mobu Live Link is available on the Unreal Marketplace, but it isn't completely up to date. As of making this video, the 2022 version is not available on there. You have to get it from here. Um, the documentation also says a slightly incorrect way of installing uh, Live Link into Motion Builder. And I'll show you how to get it working um, as I had uh, some difficulties myself getting it set up. But when you're on this page, all you need to do on the right hand side, you'll see a releases tab if you just hit that and version 2.5 is the latest one which has the 2022 which is what I'm after and if you just get the mobu live link zip asset there and download that um, and open up that zip so we've got the little zip here and we've got to mobu live link binaries and pick the version we need so I'm going to need 2022 Okay, so these three files need to go in a very specific place in your um, C drive. Uh, so if I just bring open Explorer here. So if we head to Windows, uh, Program Files, Autodesk, Motion Builder 2022, Bin, X64, and there's a folder called Plugins here. So we're going to need to extract these assets into there. I already have them in there, so I won't replace them. But uh, as you can see, there they are. If you put them in there, and that will install it. And if you've got Motion Builder open currently, make sure you close it and reopen it. But let's just boot it open. And to check it's installed, all you'll need to do is in the bottom right in the asset browser, head to the devices section, and you'll see that there is a, a UE Live Link uh, device available there. Um, so if you've read the documentation, you may see that the documentation actually says that you need to install it by going to settings at the top, hitting preferences and adding it to the SDK section. This doesn't seem to work in 2022 or this current version, um, which is why it needs to be installed in the plugin path that I've just shown you. So if you are having any problems where it's not showing up in the devices, make sure it's actually installed in the plugins folder and not through here. Uh, so let's test it. This actually works between Unreal and uh, Motion Builder. So we can do this by dragging in the UE Live Link device into the scene and you'll get this window at the bottom and all you need to do is hit the online checkbox here and wait till it goes green. Okay, now if we move back over to Unreal, on this Live Link interface, we should be able to go to source, message bus source, and there should be a Motion Builder Live Link uh, source type there. So if you just hit that, and you can see we've got some data streaming through here. So now let's get it on a character. So if we go into uh, our content browser, um, I'm going to get it moving on the mannequin in this tutorial. So I'm just going to open up the, the mannequin skeletal mesh. And if we head back to Motion Builder and we get the mannequin open up in here as well. So one thing to know is that when you open a new scene, the um, the device is actually in the scene for live link. So you will have to add another device into the scene here now that I've reopened this mannequin. So we drag this in 
And basically, we want to stream the skeleton hierarchy. So we need to tell the tool that we need to transfer that data. So at the bottom here, we've got a subject selector. So if you hit the little three dots, um, and the, the UI will pop up, and you can see that we've got all the hierarchy we want. So we, we want root downwards, basically. So we hit root, and then hit add. And I'll add it into the subjects that it can stream through. So if we give it a name, so I'm going to call this mannequin. I'm going to copy that for later. Um, all we need to do is make sure the online button is hit and it's green. So if we head back into Unreal, uh, we will need to reestablish our um, connection as we have destroyed it. So if you go back to the message bus source and get Motion Builder Live Link reconnected up, and you'll see that the mannequin character is streaming through properly now. Uh, so if we head back to the uh, mannequin character, uh, what we can do uh, quickly is we can enable the camera sync. And if we put them side by side, we'll see that the camera will actually start syncing between Motion Builder and Unreal. And then if we want the animation on the character to transfer through, if we change the live link subject name to mannequin and grab one of his joints. And there we go. It's all streaming through nice into the viewport here. So any animation you had in, in the motion builder scene will stream through uh, perfectly. But you may ask, how do you get it actually onto a character in the scene? Because this is only in the viewport. Um, you may want uh, you may want like a character with some uh, lighting or uh, particles emitting in the scene. So there's a little bit of an extra step, but uh, all we need to do is create an animation graph. Uh, so I'll just walk you through that now. So if we just disconnect all this, close that interface, keep the live link open. If we head back to the content browser, uh, we're gonna need an animation blueprint. So I'm gonna go to the blueprints folder and create a new animation, animation blueprint uh, for the mannequin skeleton. So I'm gonna call this ABP live link. And um, live link offers an animation node called live link. And we're gonna need to add one of those to the scene. So we got a live link pose node. If we just bring that in, connect it up. And similar to what we did in the viewport, we need to give it the subject name. So we're gonna put mannequin. As soon as we hit enter, should be able to see, uh, if we just bring that over a little bit more. Character streaming through into the viewport, which is awesome. Uh, we do have a note on the node, which is basically that it's got no input pose. If you're a stickler like me for being tidy, one thing you can do is a local space ref pose and plug that in. And if you just compile that, it will get rid of the little node there. Um, it'll be all nice and clean. So if we save that, browse to the content browser, and if we just drag that blueprint directly into our level, let's zero it out. Uh, zero out the floor as well because that's got a 20 unit and if we just play the game I'm just going to eject because I've got a game mode on just fly out a little bit now anything we do will fully stream through onto the character which is awesome because any animation it'll all come through uh, cloth and dynamics will come through um, if you are using this on any kind of motion capture shoot, um, I'll, I'll give you a few warnings that um, if you're using the PhysX solutions that a cloth and the dynamics can crash if the um, actor goes out of the volume. So make sure you've got all that stuff disabled. Uh, the chaos implementation seems to be a little bit more stable where it'll just freeze the pose or the cloth will just stop simulating. So um, I, I, maybe, I recommend maybe using that on, on, a, on a shoot instead. Um, but yeah, it's really cool tech. I, I've used this on a few motion capture shoots and it is invaluable and the actors really, really love it. And um, it really adds an extra depth to um, to the shoot. I do have another tutorial already available on YouTube for uh, Maya. If anybody is interested in the Maya setup, it is very similar. It's just, uh, you're just not using this um, device tool. It's very, there's an equivalent for it in Maya. But if you have any questions, guys, uh, drop them below. I'll, I'll answer every single question um, or message me on Twitter at MattLakeTA. And thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Goodbye.